Good day and welcome to this edition of the Evening Review. My name is Taiwan Jabala, your host for tonight. Let's have a look at today's front page of Namibian Sun. Tonight in this segment we are joined by Mackay uh, Losper, who is an activist of the uh, Landless People's Movement in uh, Kunene region. Uh, he's based in, in Korihas. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> so so we've, we've known you as, uh, as just as an activist. Uh, we uh, Until recently we now hearing that you are affiliated to the Landless People's Movement. <coughs> Maybe just, just walk us through your decision to actually uh, affiliate with LPM. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, first of all, as most of the people know, um, I was from the onset an independent candidate, mm -hmm. but um, I had to make a certain decisions that is in favor, you know, of the community which I represent. Yeah. And it did not make sense for me, you know, to run as an independent candidate while I speak the same language, you know, as the LPM, while mm -hmm. I do the same things as an LPM. Mm -hmm. Also, as an independent candidate, you know, me being elected as a councillor, independent councillor, it's going to happen. Yeah. But the chances of me getting things implemented, the plans that I want implemented, mm -hmm. is very slim. Mm -hmm. So I actually just took the decision to say that, okay, fine. My character and LPM, they are basically one in one. Mm -hmm. So I had to make the choice and join LPM and to take Korikas forward. Indeed. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a Korihas, um, <coughs> as a born and bred resident of, uh, of Korihas, J just why is uh, Korihas seems to be stagnating? Everybody says, you know, it's one of the least development towns in the country. But what are the issues there? The issues are, are politically motivated because people have voted for the wrong political party. Mm -hmm. Yes, for the past 25 years before Swapo took over, the UDF was just very incompetent. Mm. And for the past five years, we have given the reins to Sopo. But Sopo, as we know, is a po political party that is based on greed, political greed, that is based on, on, on you know, it, it's, it's filled with all these thieves mm. who are just there to enrich themselves. Mm. And the issues that we have and why Korika is not developing is because the council um, is, 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 is is consisting of, of mostly Sopo councillors, you know. Mm -hmm. Sopo is the reins there. Mm -hmm. But the management committee now is, is UDF. Mm -hmm. So any development thing that has to come goes through the management committee. Mm -hmm. So the UDF basically just to sabotage, you know, the reins of Sopo and Korihas mm -hmm. um, destroys everything already. Anything development at the management committee level. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we have uh, really councillors who are just there. You know, they are stealing tenders, they are doing this and that. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what's happening in Korekas. And the people pretty much are, are illiterate. Mm -hmm. And they are taking that to their advantage mm -hmm. to enrich themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago, I was dealing with a, a former mayor, a councillor, current councillor as well, mm -hmm. who illegally tried to, to purchase land, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, and he, because there was like a conflict of interest, you know, mm -hmm. and we blocked that. You understand? Mm. So all those things, you know, that are actually happening mm. currently right now in Korihas. Mm. And that's because we have the wrong political party. In indeed. Now, <coughs> when, I'm, when I'm listening to you, you seem to have uh, deep-seated uh, concerns and differences with the manner in which uh, council is, is being administered. And uh, would it not then therefore make sense that you, r you, r you run for council positions rather than a constituency constituency uh, position that that would be true but my scope of of worries is 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 broad you mm. know mm. because yes i do talk about things that happen in korehas but there are people also you know in the broader community in broader in the constituency mm. that are facing the same problems that are happening mm. you know in in 
in Korihas. Mm. So it, it would be fair for you know for me to run for constituency um, office. Yeah, I hear you. Now, <coughs> the um, I get a sense that you are you are pretty new in in LPM. LPM itself is new, and um, you have already had your ambitions uh, prior to joining the party. Uh, that is to run as a constituency councillor candidate, uh, initially as an independent candidate. So how will you navigate your way around the internal party uh, processes to still remain the candidate uh, of the party there? Uh, the thing is, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty um, confident that I'll win the internal elections because <laughs> yeah. of the work that I've done in the community. Yeah. But still, yeah. um, and that's also one of the reasons why I joined LPM, because I need to, to be subjected, you know, to yeah. authority. I need to be subjected to, you know, a constitution, you yeah. understand? Yeah. So LPM pretty much is a very democratic party yeah. because even before, prior to joining them, we already discussed this and then they said, no, even if you join, it's, it's not a guarantee that you are going to be our candidate. Mm. You still need to go through a democratic process mm. of being elected. And I said, okay, I agree. Mm. If people want me, then they want me. If they don't, then mm. they don't. Yeah. You know, then it further proves that, you know, um, if I was independent candidate, I was probably just doing it on my own, yeah. you know. But if the people say that, no, but make we want you, we're going to elect you yeah. as an LPM uh, candidate, then I think I'm the people's choice. Indeed. Now, Korehas is one of the towns or supposedly I suppose constituencies where the electorate is pretty liberal. The fact that you had uh, UDF for, for years there and now Swapo is in charge um, shows that uh, uh, the residents of this town are actually driven by issues and not necessarily by the parties because elsewhere there are places where only one political party wins irrespective of what presentation you make to, to the people. Um, what are the priorities, what would be your priorities uh, if you were to be voted there? I would basically not have any specific priorities because there's a lot of work that needs to be done in Korihas. Mm -hmm. You know, we are dealing with mining, we are dealing with tourism, agriculture, all those things. So everything basically at this moment in time mm -hmm. is a priority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And, 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 and perhaps one of the reasons why Korihas seems to be also lagging behind in terms of development is the vastness of the region in which it's located, which is Kunene region. Um, <coughs> to, so the, the, the region is so big that at, at one stage, I think President Genkop had, uh, or, the, or the, the regional governor there had two, two advisors, advisors yeah. one for the southern part of the region and one for the northern region of, uh, of, of the region, of, of part of the region. Um, do you think that that vastness has also contributed to Korea has not really getting out of the uh, starting blocks that 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 so much that the resources have to be shared between so many people in the region as opposed to having a concentrated and and and, and, and deliberate uh, focused development as you rightfully said um the region is so big you know we get the resources or let's say we get you know financial resources yeah. but it now has to be distributed you know all over like equally you understand mm -hmm. whereas we can take Omosati region or Oshana region which is very small mm -hmm. and then you know the, the people can basically utilize mm -hmm. the, the level that they're getting from the central government you yeah. understand yeah. so it would be pretty much fair to also split the regions you know yeah. so that we can have a focused you know um, sort of budget you know to a specific town or to a specific uh, settlement and whatever mm -hmm. and also this current trend that is there that everything needs to be administered in Opua now, mm. whether it's tenders, whether it's budget allocation, whether it's whatever. That is also what's blocking, you know, development from coming, mm. you know, to the southern part. Mm. Because if I'm in charge, you know, of money and I'm, and, and I'm in the northern part of the region, obviously I would want to develop my area to show the people that my leadership is, you know, I'm, I'm a competent leader, mm. you understand? Mm. So I, I pretty much uh, would say that, you know, it would be fair for us uh, to uh, split the regions also. Indeed, yeah. and, and, and perhaps one of the contentious issues uh, that comes with that discussion is, uh, is the fact that um, maybe as things stand now, uh, the southern part of the region is populated by predominantly Damara speaking people and uh, then uh, the Oba Herero and Himba uh, and, and sub-tribes there. Uh, in the northern part of the region, <coughs> uh, do you think that uh, at any stage, because there's always this thing that no, 
the Damara seems to be benefiting more, the Herero seems to be benefiting more, which is not the kind of easy conversation to have. Mm -hmm. But um, do, do you think that has ever played a part in the way the region has been developing so far? It's a yes and a no at the same time. Basically, we know that most of our resources, whether it comes from Wolfish Bay, whether it comes from the south, whatever, it's basically developing Windhoek and it's developing the north. It's mm -hmm. a fact that it's there. But what has caused, you know, Kunene South not to develop that much is because um, even the little money that comes, you mm -hmm. know, from government, the leadership, the local authority leadership, don't utilize the money the way it's supposed to be. We don't use the money the way it's supposed to be because we are so filled with greed and we are so filled with corruption. Yeah. And that's basically what the main thing that played, played, played a role, you know, in um, the underdevelopment mm -hmm. of Kunene South, particularly in, in Korehas. Mm -hmm. And, and, and getting out of Kunene and, and Korehas in particular, um, this is going to be a, com a very different year in many ways. I think there is uh, this wave of independent candidates and also a lot of young people now wanting to also try their luck at, uh, at politics. Uh, how do you read uh, the interest of young people in politics in general and uh, the impact that they are likely to make in this year's election? No, young people should be involved in politics because obviously old people have shown us that they, they don't care about us, they care about their, their pockets, you understand? <laughs> yeah. So if at least I know if I have my fellow young person, you know, in an office, I, I'll be able to speak to him, you know, because we have this thing, you know, where you come to an office, that is, that is filled by an old person, they'll tell you, but you are a child, you can't tell me anything. Mm. You know, old people don't want to be corrected. Yeah. Particularly, you know, these uh, sober party politicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And w when I watch a lot of your videos, uh, uh, and, and they pop up on a lot of WhatsApp groups that I'm on, uh, and, and social, other social media platforms, uh, you, you, they say, they say an aura of, an element of, how do I put it, uh, of, um, I don't know, uh, it's not, it's not insults, but it's strong, um, bold pronouncements uh, that may be seen in, 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 in many ways as a, as a young boy who doesn't respect elders. Uh, you, you have had things to say about the president, for example, saying, I think in one of your videos, you said, you know, uh, this thing of respect the elders is not in the context, in the broader context of politics. Of, of politics, it doesn't apply. Maybe expand for us on, on, on that. But first of all, um, <coughs> In politics, I would, I would put it in my sense that there's no respect in politics, because as politicians, uh, you know, we make speeches and we make political speeches. You know, mm. we use vocabulary, political vocabulary. So if you take that as an insult, then so be it. Mm. But if I see that the pre president is incompetent, I'll say he's incompetent. Mm. And yes, we have a useless, uh, useless uh, president right now. We have useless ministers like Utoni Nuyoma. You know, so I can't say he's useless and then I have to president, I have to be a hand clapper. Mm. Doesn't work like that. Mm. If I don't necessarily use a word to insult you, you know, mm. the insulting words that we know, mm. then I don't see that as an insult. I mm. see that as a political speech. Yes, yes. Uh, maybe finally, just uh, Mr. Lospa, is the, uh, the issue of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> or of yeah, your, your party. Um, your party has made uh, quite uh, he headlines prior to, to Parliament going on recess. Um, your your president uh, at the times throwing uh, you know ripping off his jacket and throwing it on the floor, wanting to uh, confront people physically there. Um, is that uh, running into or running in the in the blood veins of LPM, and are we likely to see similar kind of uh, antics from yourself once you become elected officially? I think Parliament is lucky I'm not there. <laughs> Because I think the LCCC probably just took, took off his jacket out and beaten someone. <laughs> because we are frustrated. Yeah. We are suffering. Mm. People are hungry. People are jobless. Mm. And yet uh, parliamentarians go there and sleep in parliament. Yeah. They come there, there and preach things that we, that we don't care about. We are dealing with real people here. Yeah. With real issues. You yeah. understand? Yeah. And I get so angry, you know, when especially there's uh, the swap of politicians 
really they come here and pre preach about uh, you know youth development and whatever things you know yeah. but they are not going down to the people they are not speaking to the people yeah. they are sitting in the air-conditioned offices mm -hmm. thinking that they know that information that they are receiving is actually what's on the ground yeah. we need politicians to go on the ground and be with the people speak to the people see how the people are living yeah. let me tell you go to go to Korihas. we have currently now a river of sewage water we have sewage pipes that are just this size we are dealing with water uh, uh, cutouts every day. Mm. We are dealing with e e electricity, what is, what is this, outages every week. Mm. Mm. Is that how we are supposed to be in an independent Namibia after 30 years? So I think the LCCC was still calm. <laughs> I would have beaten someone. <laughs> okay. The last question, say, I thought this would be the last one, but I realized there's uh, one last one that uh, I think we still have a bit of time. It's really just on... Uh, I think I saw uh, an opinion piece by yourself in one of the local newspapers where you pronounced yourself on abortion. Was, did you write anything about abortion? It was in the Namibian newspaper, yeah. Yes. Um, because that debate is huge now in the country. Uh, people saying, you know, uh, well, women should be allowed to have that choice of their own, on their own to say whether to keep pregnancies or not. And there are those who simply say, no, uh, it is a devilish act to do that especially if there was no rape if, you, if it was consensual sex <coughs> and you fall pregnant and now later you want to come and say you want to abort uh, wh what was your pronouncement on the subject i can't remember the your exact view i don't support abortion yeah. because i think there are more important things that we need to be talking about now yeah. other than abortion yeah i mean if you don't want to fall pregnant then don't have sex yeah. simple as that abstain mm. there are things like birth control there are things, there are contraceptives that you can be used if you don't want the child. Mm. So what, how, why do you fall pregnant and then you want to kill again? It you doesn't make sense. You got excited in the middle of the night and then uh, things didn't go well. Then you, you know, actions have consequences, basically. Mm. And the result of sex is pregnancy. Yeah. And it's also sickness, as you understand. Yeah. So we just need to, you, you know, use those contraceptives available. And I understand there's also this... Um, uh, whatever abortion that the hospitals are giving in, in terms of like when you are raped or when your health is at risk you know those things are there mm -hmm. if you don't want to fall pregnant don't have sex simple as that oh, but sex is a, it's an essential need how can you how can sex be essential <laughs> we are busy with um, eco economic development you know and those babies that you want to kill they are uh, potential activists yeah. they are potential ministers <laughs> they are potential presidents you want yeah. to kill them yeah so I'm not going to go the religious route, but I'm going to go the economic route. Yeah. We need those children that are being killed, yeah. you know, to help in this fight for economic freedom. Yeah, but I suppose in, in towns like, uh, in Vinduk already, things like condoms, uh, free condoms in particular, have become very rare. Um, in the past, you would walk into, into ablution facilities, you find a, a box of condoms being, uh, you know, put somewhere, people can, can just walk in and grab. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a rare, it's, it's very, very rare just to, to walk into a place like that and find any. And, and, and that is also some of the things that uh, as uh, aspiring political leaders, uh, you must look at. Because I'm sure in a, in a place like Korihas, maybe it's even worse. Uh, no, we have condoms. <laughs> yeah. You have condoms? Yeah, we have condoms. The commercial ones, you know, because I'm, I'm really referring to those. Both the smile really, condoms yeah. and also the commercial ones, yeah. Okay. No, no, then it's good. Uh, maybe the, the reason why we cannot see them in Windhoek anymore is because they're in no, because people don't <laughs> <laughs> No, people don't use them yeah. in Windhoek because they don't have a smell, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's basically a waste of money. To, uh, to produce condoms that people are not using because people will take it and probably make balloons or do whatever they want with it, you understand? <laughs> yeah. So I think the government needs just to do something, you know, yeah. to give us flavored condoms, you know, some, you know, some smell, nice smells and stuff like that. Mm. And I think we're talking something. Indeed. Mr. Lospa, thank you very much for coming to the evening review. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we are at the <laughs> Corona. We are, yeah, we are, we are, yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 No, thank you very much. I appreciate right. it. <laughs> that is uh, uh, Mackay Lospa, who is the uh, an activist of the Landless People's Movement based in the Kunene region and uh, Korihas in particular, speaking to us about his ambitions for political office in the upcoming elections and uh, what he will do if he, were grant, he was granted a, an opportunity to lead in that constituency. Thank you for watching. Good night.